Hi, my name is Phil. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Maze Troll Tips and Tricks. In this video, we're going to talk about the machine's barriers for the chuck and the tailstock. So let's get into it right now. All right, getting into setting the barriers. So push the left button and let's go into the trace screen. So here's the image from before. I'm going to zoom it out. Quite a ways. So right here in the red, we can see the, the machine's turret. We can see the tail stock. And we can see I have the jaws mounted to the chuck and also the yellow chuck. So I'm going to zoom this up a little more from 20 to around 10. So scale, move it over here, 10. And this is a graphical representation for setting the barriers. So on this machine, it's different than the one I have at work in that if I don't put a jaw in here, it won't show the chuck. So right now the work, work number one is active. So go to program file. So work number one. And I have jaw number one in there. So trace, I didn't keep the store on it. So scale 10, scale. All right, let's push the store button this time. So here's the representation of the chuck, and then here's the jaws that I have mounted on it. Left button, program, program file. And now if I take the jaw number out and push chuck data zero, on this machine, if I don't have jaws mounted, the chuck goes away. It's different than the one that I got at work, even though it's the exact same model machine. But what the machine at work usually has is program file. So chuck number two, and if I push chuck data, so this is where you would draw the jaws. So when I'm using hard jaws, dimension A, so OD clamping jaw out, dimension A is 2.33 inches, dimension B is 600 thou, Dimension C is 2.36, and dimension D is 1.5. So jaw number two, dimension A, I told it it was only 10 thousandths thick and four inches in length. So now here's what, I selected jaw number two in the trace screen, and now you can see the chuck without jaws mounted because they're only 10 thousandths thick. So the Z offset, if I clear this out, then the chuck actually sits right on the Z zero. The machine that I use at work I usually don't put the jaws on it for the barriers. Program file. But what I'll do is I'll put in a minus five inches value on the Chuck Z. And what that does on the trace screen is it pushes the Chuck back five inches. So that way when we're machining up here, it's not in the way. And that's a, a simple way to get rid of the barrier 
without pushing barrier cancel and you can run into the tailstock. So the tailstock barrier is very important and it keeps the machine from crashing into itself. So here's the tailstock and then the red represents the turret and if we jog the machine around jog it down then we can adjust the tailstock barrier on the command screen so push the left button go to command and right now the tailstock is at 28 inches from the chuck because I have a minus 5 inches in the chuck Z offset so come down here this is kind of trial and error for the tailstock. Basically, move the tailstock a few inches each way. So 28 inches, so go 26 inches, and then go back to the trace screen and see where the tailstock landed up. So right here, I have about a two inch clearance between the tailstock and when the red hits the, the simulated, when the red hits the simulated center, then this tail barrier comes up and it prevents the machine from crashing into the tailstock. Nearly every Mazak that I've ran, somebody has already crashed the tailstock and because they pushed the barrier cancel. Uh, setting up the barriers is kind of is kind of a pain in the beginning, but once you get them set, then it keeps the machine from crashing. Anyway, the chuck barrier, because you're going to be machining into the jaws, soft jaws or everything, Usually you just want to push that chuck out of the way and that's done with the chuck Z offset. So now if I'm using hard jaws, then I use jaw number one or a minus 1.2 inches jaw one and then when I'm setting the jaws and then when I'm running parts with hard jaws I won't crash into the machine. Hard jaws is where I usually set the barriers. The soft jaws I usually just move the chuck out of the way. Um, I'm not an expert on on barriers for the machine. I just know how to get them out of the way so I can actually run the machine. Um, but I do know pushing barrier cancel disregards the barriers but it it sets you up for crashing if you're if you just jog the machine it'll crash into the tailstock so be very careful about that if you do use barrier cancel so again if I don't have any jaws mounted on this machine the chuck goes away so program layout or program file. So if I clear this out so I have no jaws mounted, then the chuck goes away. My other machine doesn't do that. I don't know why. Anyway, that's about the extent I know about this machine's barriers. It's it's basically a trial and error operation, but do it on the trace screen. So you can actually vis visibly see the barrier come up instead of it. So 
So right now it's actually disregarding the tailstock ferry because I took the jaws out. So let's go back. One. And that's basically what I know about the machine's barriers. It's trial and error to set the tailstock barrier. You come up here to the command screen. If you want to use tailstock teach, basically what you would do is measure from the distance from the active tool with a tape measure to the tailstock, push tailstock teach, and for example, if the tailstock is 20 inches behind where the tool is at, you'd push tailstock teach minus 20 input and it calculates a number. So go to the tray screen to actually see the tailstock barriers instead of the machine coming up with that barrier alarm and you don't know why it's doing it. So, my biggest thing that I'm trying to explain is use the trace screen, use the command screen to set the tailstock, and program file right here on the Chuck Z in order to get the Chuck barrier out of the way. Give it a minus five inch number. And that will pull the chuck barrier out of the way. And that's all I know about the chuck barriers. I just know it's trial and error. Uh, use the trace screen so you can actually see the barriers and go from there. I hope this video was helpful for you and thanks for watching.